Hello, everyone. I'm Sherry Yamamoto from Conan University. On behalf of our team, I'd like to welcome you to our presentation. Our aim today is to share our experiences of adapting a self-access learning program to provide emergency remote learning during the initial wave of COVID-19. Our program um, today is divided into five main sections and we'll each be taking turns to cover various aspects of our action research from planning to implementation to adjustments based on data and feedback. Let's begin with a brief overview of the Self-Access Center from Tom Mack. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. My name is Tom Mock. I'm the first of two Toms on this presentation team. And my goal is to show you guys what our Self-Access Center looked like, especially uh, before the pandemic hit, so that you can get some idea of what we're trying to replicate as we moved online. Um, OK, so let's take a look. Uh, if you joined us on campus, uh, this is a facility you would see. This is our global zone, the terrace view. If you walked inside, you would notice that it's divided into three major zones. The language loft, of course, is our uh, Self-Access Center uh, for English. The Ajisai room is where our international students hang out. Um, they study there, they can use the room in any way that they want. And then um, the Global Learning Commons is a sort of free space where any students on campus can mingle. Um, and so from this layout already, you can sort of, sort of see that a major concept of this place is about um, interaction, social interaction, and especially intercultural communication. Um, and so of course, uh, learner autonomy and solitary learning opportunities are still offered and stressed, but um, the most important thing is offering communication interaction opportunities. Um, okay, and we offer three kinds of activities. Uh, visits are, you know, like the, uh, you know, playing games or chat circles and so on, uh, conducted in English, of course. Um, tasks are uh, more typical kind of worksheet based activities or maybe video lessons and so on. These can be completed alone or with friends. And then events are the uh, workshops and presentations, usually hosted by our uh, student staff, but sometimes by teachers as well. Okay, um, and from the beginning, um, our language loft has been tied to a required freshman English course um, by means of a stamp card in order to encourage students to attend. They get a bit, bit of a boost on their grade. And that has helped us to maintain pretty good usage data. Um, if you take a look at the chart, you'll see that, you know, even over the last three years, we've, we've pretty much averaged over 10,000 um, uses or interactions per uh, year. And, you know, when we had to go online because of coronavirus, we had uh, a lot of issues to face quickly. And one of them was what activity types to offer. Um, we decided not to go with the tasks because as the whole university moved online, um, of course, all of their courses became a sort of um, remote tasks, right? And so, so we didn't need tasks so much as social interaction. So we stressed the visits and events as we moved online. Um, we lost half of our student staff, the loft tutors, who that's what we call our international students. They had to go home. And um, so we were left with only our loft assistants, the Conan students, LAs we call them, but they really came through for us. Um, the platform we chose was Zoom, and we had to replace our physical stamp cards with the sort of online um, feedback form. Uh, we would collect the data and distribute that to the teachers or the students. Okay, uh, that's it for me. Let's move on to Sherry, and she'll give you some more details about implementation. Hi again. There are multiple issues that we had to consider to be able to respond to the challenge that we faced. The challenge was how to develop an online program that would provide language learning and social interaction opportunities to students who were also navigating the switch to emergency remote education. We were able to identify the issues, develop and implement a plan for a 10 week period, collect data and feedback, and then follow up by making adjustments to complete the cycle of our action research. In transitioning from an in-person to an online program, our primary focus was to create a learner-friendly virtual learning environment. We thought this would be the key to a successful online program. And so we put a lot of effort into making sure that the learning environment would have the capacity to actively engage students in social interactions with teachers, student staff, and their peers. Our approach 
was to modify the content and method of these activities while making sure that the activities were flexibly structured to provide an interactive learning experience for students. We also adjusted time where necessary and reconsidered the roles of teachers and student staff in the virtual learning environment. Our main priority was to sustain pathways that incorporated language learning and social interaction to foster students' sense of autonomy and sense of connection. So first, we looked at managing our resources in the most efficient and effective ways. This enabled us to schedule teachers and student staff and provide a total of 14 activities each week. Then we considered how to make the online activities as easily accessible to students. Our approach was to design a weekly schedule to send to teachers by email to share with their students and then distribute subsequent schedules via the university's learning management system log website and line account. Finally, we decided to incorporate an online survey form to confirm student attendance, encourage post-activity reflection, and gather feedback. Another vital part to developing the online program was training LOFT assistants, our fantastic student staff team. Our usual in-person orientations were scheduled to be held just after the university announced campus closures, which meant that we had to scramble to put together a combination of pre-recorded videos and Zoom sessions. We used the university's LMS to create a virtual space to house these resources and could then monitor students' progress and readiness, as well as identify potential problem areas. A line group helped to stream communications for ongoing scheduling and updates. And there were limitations to training students remotely in such a short time. So a big part of student staff development was working with other team members in actual on the job training. Thanks to the great teamwork and collaborative efforts of teachers and student staff, LOFT was able to provide a total of 140 activities over a 10 week period. And from the 1,754 survey responses that we received, we were able to determine that mostly freshman students enrolled in the English course linked to the Self Access Center participated in the online program. Student feedback strongly indicates that their experiences at LOFT online activities were overall positive. That's about all for my part. I'll pass it on to Tom for now. Thank you. Hello, my name is Tom Stringer and I'll be discussing our spring semester events. So our initial plans, implementation and our observations. So first I'll talk about the initial plan. Uh, Loft events were presentations using PowerPoint. They were led by a single LA presenter and supported by two LA helpers and a teacher. Each event lasted for 30 minutes and was on a presenter selected theme. So study abroad, study tips or personal choice of topic. And presenters gave chances for audience interaction you can see an example here on the right from LA Yuki introducing different dog breeds, and that included some discussion questions. Next, I'll discuss the implementation. There were 90 events held over 10 weeks and averaging around 16 attendees. Our attendance peaked in May and it consistently declined after that. The lead LA presenter was the Zoom host, presenter, and they facilitated the event whereas the LA co-leaders and the teacher played a more supportive role managing the Zoom functions. And we adopted a consistent timing with the 30 minute presentation bookended by a preparation and wrap up session with the team. Uh, finally, I'll go over what we observed in the spring. So from the teacher's point of view, it was a positive thing that the LAs could discuss topics with which they were familiar or even recycle presentations from previous years with some adjustments for the online environment. Um, as time went on, the teams became better at working together and at effectively using the Zoom functions to promote some interactivity. Nevertheless, we had consistent problems with our internet connections and also with engaging the audience. Uh, however, our attendance rates were high. So 86% of total loft activities were events and they were positively reviewed. So students reported 
that they valued the chance to hear from the more experienced loft assistants about studying abroad or effective study methods, and that the events positively changed their view of studying English. And as for the loft assistants, they felt they gained a lot of marketable skills from the experience that would serve them well in future job hunting. Hello, my name is Greg Schult, and I will be sharing about the second type of activity that we offer through Online Loft called Visits. The goal of this activity is to provide students an opportunity to engage in a casual chat with their peers. The activity lasts 30 minutes and is hosted by a teacher. Three student language assistants lead conversations in separate breakout rooms with small groups of student participants. Each week, there is a general theme such as music or food, and then a more specific set of questions to get the chat started. At the beginning of the visit, the teacher and the LAs model one of the questions in a round robin style Q&A. After that, the teacher sends them into breakout rooms. After six or seven minutes, everyone is brought back into the main room to share some interesting answers before returning to the same breakout rooms to continue the chat with two other questions as starting points. Over the course of 10 weeks in the condensed semester, we hosted 50 visits. Typically, we would see around 10 to 15 students, but occasionally there might be only three or four. Primarily, the teacher served as a facilitator, hosting the activity and managing Zoom functions. The LAs focused on leading the chats in the breakout rooms and doing their best to adjust to the unique group of students that they had. There were minor changes to the procedures, particularly in the first few weeks, as teachers and LAs better understood what worked and what didn't. At the end of the semester, we reflected on the experiences with visits through discussion and review of questionnaire feedback. The planning stage was a little tricky because there were a lot of unknowns and more than a few different opinions. However, we came out with a really good plan that only needed minor tweaks along the way. I think that incorporating a decent degree of flexibility with timings, questions, and other roles was critical to their success. The teachers' remaining concerns centered on how to adapt to the unique group of student participants that showed up that day and how to raise output during the activity. On the student side of things, the visits were attended less than events by a significant margin. However, the feedback was strong. They generally liked the smaller groups and familiar themes that allowed more interaction with peers than the events. Hello, I'm Craig Mertens. Next, let's focus on second semester adjustments. To do so, we focused on three areas that we felt needed attention. The first area is loft activities. In our events, we noticed LA proposals and the timing of feedback from leaders were leading to poor presentations. Also for visits, student attendance and the scheduling of different LAs made things a bit challenging. The second is student behavior. Some students had trouble being late, had Wi-Fi issues, their camera was off, their room was noisy, and they were either disengaged or distracted. The third is attendance forms. Teachers used online forms for LA attendance and student attendance. Unfortunately, some students had trouble inputting their information, which led to staff trying to troubleshoot these areas and not always solving the problem. After identifying these issues, we decided to make several adjustments. For loft activities, event proposal templates were changed to online presentations rather than in person. LAs needed to send their proposals and slides to their leader one week prior to their presentation date for feedback and time to edit. A loft orientation was held, which leaders clearly defined goals for LAs in their events and visits. To address student behavior, a manners video and a PDF checklist were shown in activities. Instead of one form for all students, forms and QR codes were made for each teacher and loft staff signs in to events to check LA attendance. Currently, we are seeing some positive changes. The proposals and feedback are working. The LA presentations are improving. 
For visits, LAs are better prepared and more experienced. There are fewer issues with student behavior. Attendance has been simplified and teachers can check that at any time. Currently, campus is now open and Loft is offering online activities on campus and at home. In the future, Loft is considering a hybrid of activities with both online and offline participation. This concludes our team presentation, but before we end, I'd like to highlight that our approach of modifying Loft activities helped to speed the transition to emergency remote learning. It wasn't an easy task and it took the coordinated efforts of everyone involved. In retrospect, I like to think that we all contributed pieces to a puzzle that we were able to put together with creative thinking and a willingness to try. We're still striving to improve the quality of the self access learning program at Conan University. So we're looking forward to hearing your thoughts during the question and answer session. Thank you so much for your interest and attention. <laughs>